Hi, welcome to the service appointment generator or the multi-resource assignment wizard. Um, this is a tool that you can use to create a service appointment for a technician and um, in, in a batch format. So if you have long work, long range work, and you have to assign um, multiple resources to the work, this tool will create a service appointment for each service resource for each day. So for example, uh, you have to be on site for two weeks, 14 days, let's say, and you need to send two people that will create 28 service appointments uh, with the 14 appointments for uh, service resource A and 14 for service resource B. Now the creation of those appointments would be tedious to do on your own. So this tool will help you uh, with that creation process. And then not only just the creation process, but if you have to delete them all or edit them all in mass. We are taking advantage of the data table tool that is available in Unofficial SF, which is an incredible tool to leverage. So um, thank you very much for having that. And let's get into the solution. What I've done is I'm opened in a work order, and this is a flow that was added to the Lightning App Builder page for the work order just added it as its own tab and added the flow to the page. When there aren't any service appointments for the work order, this will be the screen you see. We're calling this the, um, the appointment parameters. So what we're trying to do is uh, create the batch within the right context. So this is I guess, like setting up the template. And we created these helper fields. The work order start and end date are just pulled right from the record itself to give you, um, you know, some guidance to make sure you're not creating appointments outside of these parameters. We recommend creating your appointments in batches of two weeks. Note there is a limitation of 1,000 rows in the data table. So be mindful that you don't want to create too many records uh, to because it, for, for, for performance reasons. And then just also know that you won't be able to hit over 1,000. So, you know, we recommend batches of two weeks. Uh, but if you need to create longer than that, I mean, you can just, again, stay within the 1,000 uh, parameter. You can include your Saturdays and or Sundays. So let's just create some for Saturdays. Your start time here. This is presented in your Salesforce users time zone. If I had to create appointments sitting in the Eastern time zone, if I had to create appointments for some people in the Pacific time zone, I will have to offset this start time here. So what time in Eastern time, if they had to start at six o'clock Pacific time, it means that they're gonna be starting nine o'clock Eastern time. So be mindful, you will have to be thinking about this when you are creating your appointments across multiple time zones but it's supported. Um, so I'm gonna say that they're gonna start at nine o'clock Eastern for the territory in Toronto, which is Eastern. And I have an option here to uh, filter by the territory. So again, if I need to book an appointment for, um, you know, a different territory, I can. And you'll know what territory you need to book because it's the territory on the, um, on the work order. And then the skill, if you want to filter the technicians based off of the skill, for example, you need to only find people with break fix, you can do that. You can just click here and then you can um, 
add all the resources that you need, you can run this wizard multiple times for January 31st to February 18, including Saturdays at nine o'clock for 12 hours. And you can do multiple batches, one for your break, break fix resources, another one for your diagnostics. So if you need to build a very uh, detailed uh, skill-based crew or uh, team, this is the way you would do it. So in this case, I'm just going to pull all the service resources. And if they happen to have a secondary territory, then that, that will show. Sorry, what I mean to say is if they happen to be a secondary territory member for this, uh, for the Toronto territory, then, then they will show. So it does look like I have Paul Morrison available in the Toronto territory until uh, end of April. So I can book some appointments for Pam and Louise. You know, at some point, Gloria will be joining them. So I will show you the example uh, of that where, you know, Gloria will only be there uh, maybe one day a week. So I wanna show you what that would look like. I would, I would include her right in the beginning here. So I'll hit next. I've selected three resources. And in this screen, this is a list of all of the draft appointments. So you will want to select them all. Usually what I do is I like to expand this to verify, uh, right? So now I am seeing this in Eastern time zone. Now, another tricky thing, this data table is presenting the times based off of your machine settings, not your Salesforce settings. So it will get a bit uh, tricky. So be aware that it's, it's recommended that you keep your machine settings and your Salesforce user settings to be the same. That way there's no confusion here. If you happen to have scheduled it for, you know, you know, you wanted to do it for nine o'clock Pacific time, but you have your machine setting for Eastern, what will happen is when you open this up, it will say uh, six o'clock or nine o'clock, right? It will show you in the context of the, of the time zone. I'll go through an example of that in just a minute. But when you see it in the table, it'll be nine o'clock Eastern. When you dive into it, it'll be the time in the context of the service territory. It's very interesting. So we'll, we'll tinker with that in a second. All right, so the scenario that I said for editing these records was, you know, Gloria will only be there one day a week. So I do not need Gloria to join on any of these days, like maybe it'll be two days a week. So she doesn't need to be there. She just needs to be there on these days. All of these service appointments will be deleted. Okay. The other thing we can do is we could say, you know what, Gloria doesn't need to be there for 12 hours. She only needs to be there for four hours. And don't update all 38 because I only need to do click on the pencil, hit four. This autofill does get in the way. This is a browser setting. So if you don't have autofill, you won't experience what I'm experiencing. That's a browser setting. So right, so Gloria will only be working uh, four hours those days. Okay. So here's where uh, multi-day and uh, crew management won't uh, satisfy the requirement here because we really only need Gloria for those days. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can change the start time. So let's just say, um, let's sort by the date. So let's say on the very first day, we do want them to start really early. So maybe there's like some orientation that has to be done. I can change this. So you can build your schedule however you need. One thing to note and be very careful of is when you are, I don't recommend ever doing a multi inline edit for um, 
the date time field. If you made a mistake and said, oh no, they really do need to start at 6 a.m. every single day, it's better to go back to the beginning and start again. Because what happens with this inline editing is if I update all 38 items, it will update both the date and the time. So everything will become February 1 at 6 a.m., which is not what we want. We just wanted everything to update to 6 a.m. So we won't be able to uh, fulfill that requirement for inline editing to change all of the start times in mass. You can change them one off like you saw that I did here, but know that it's not supported to, uh, to do changing the time in line in mass. Better to go back and update. Okay, if you need to change the duration for all, that's okay because we're just uh, updating the one uh, number. So let's hit next and let's take a look at what happens to my dispatcher console. you'll see that they automatically get scheduled. You may have uh, rule violations. Um, the availability rules are not, and, and the scheduling policies are not taken into consideration for this uh, round of uh, this solution. So we will be putting these rule violations in place. And you can man, uh, manually make adjustments to your uh, console as you see fit. Okay. So remember, the fields that you see here can all be controlled by your field sets and your Gantt label. So the way that it looks on mine will definitely be different than the way that it looks for you. I'm just here to show you the uh, capability of, of shifting everything and creating everything. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, a couple of the other features that we have here. Um, you can edit all the, ex now that you have service appointments, you will have the ability to see that you you will see the screen so you can either choose to edit or create additional or delete everything so if you want to edit let's look at what that looks like so you can edit the values for the columns in this table and then it will save the changes or if you want to do more advanced edits like changing the service resource in bulk or shifting the service appointments to a new date or deleting some some appointments um, that you might want like it's possible that they say you know for um you know the first week of february we're not able to uh you know don't come because we're doing inventory or something like that so that's something that you can do let me just refresh my tab because my table vanished I refresh my browser. So then let me hit edit and my table came back. So when I, I, I don't know what happened there, but it looks like my table vanished. But when I refreshed the browser, it came back. Now, when I'm seeing things like this, some of the things that might change, you know, I may want to, you know, change some of these appointments now there's no need to change the scheduled end we would only need to change either the scheduled start or the duration so if i change the duration we have a process built in as part of the package this is not part of the the core uh product but we built something in the package that will take the duration and then shorten the scheduled end for you so it's possible that you know louise um, has to leave early. So I can change all of these to be eight hours and I can update all 17 items. Okay. Um, Pam will stay the, the whole time. So just by simply changing that, 
now you'll see that all of Louise's appointments have shrunk. So she'll be finished at five, where Pam will be finished at nine. The other things you can do with uh, editing is changing the service resource. So once I click Next, I can select, uh, let's just say it's not going to be Gloria Barnes anymore. Once I select these four and then click next, it will take me to the territory that I wanna look at. And when I hit next, it will surface up all of the territories members again. So um, I have to call in Paul. One thing that we've added here is that if they uh, this resource happens to have an appointment or a resource absence, like already assigned to them for the duration of the range that you've selected, it'll just say, yes, there is an overlap to give you an idea that you will have to fix something uh, once that information has been committed to the database. So I'm going to assign everything to Paul. And when I hit finish, It's no longer Gloria, it's now Paul with the secondary resource. Um, so what, what you'll notice here, like this kind of scenario will happen, like maybe Gloria needed to get pulled from a job or get rescheduled somewhere else, or maybe there was a, you know, a COVID incident and has to follow COVID protocol um, or health and safety protocol, whatever we call it now. And this is uh, a helpful tool to just, instead of just dragging and dropping, um, the drag and drop feature can be uh, quite sensitive. So to simplify that process and not, you know, making a mistake of really like this uh, sh uh, shift resource feature. Okay, shifting appointments. Now, I might need to say, or customer might call and say, you know what, the week of the 7th is not going to work. You have to take all of those appointments and, and then you'll start again on the 14th. So what I want to do is take all of the appointments that are ranging from February 7 to Friday, February 18, and have them all, have them all shift down and start on the 14th. So let's go through that. So I said February 7 up until February 18. And the new starting date is going to be February 14. OK, now these helper dates, again, it'll tell you at least, OK, I know that I have appointments up until February 18. So I'm going to push everything down. Now let's see how this works. I shifted 24 appointments, and there we go. So now the week of the 7th is totally open, and those resources are, resources are available to work on something else. Okay, the other piece of edit is I may need to delete some appointments. So a scenario could be customer calls in and says, you know, I'm on the, the 25th or something, maybe like you have to be done by the 20th. So you may have to delete all of these appointments and maybe you'll need to add someone to the team to help Pam and Louise get this done. So what I would do is you can just delete this batch. And you can create additional service appointments. And now I see that I've got my last service appointment found here. Um, and it's from this date range. So I could just copy this date range. And I could say, OK, I need it until, well, what did he say to me, right? I want to make sure that, gosh, this customer is going to make it tough for us, huh? 
So we'll have to staff Gloria Barnes on the first week and that um, second week, which now will be the 14th. So what I would do in this case is I would schedule them all to the 19th and I want to include Saturdays. And what time did I say we started? I think it was nine o'clock and it's 12 hours. All right, so go hit next. So you have um, Pam and Louise, but Gloria looks available. So I would just only select Gloria because I got to add her to the team. And what I would do is let's like sort by the scheduled start and select everything. And remember he said, I don't, customer said, you can't come on site on these days. And then hit next. So now Gloria is there to supplement the team to make sure that we finish on time. And I would probably for kicks, like make sure that this, the end date is reflective of what the customer said, like you gotta be done by, oh, that's wrong, February. I would update this too, because some of the helper fields that we have on this uh, screen to create additional appointments, you just wanna make sure that it's, you know, reflective and yeah, we are within the same dates here. And I can go previous. Now if the customer, so then I can, you know, speak to the customer and give them an idea of, you know, when we're going to be there. If you wanted to view all of the appointments, I would just click the edit existing service appointments if you want, and then you can get a really good idea of who's going to be on site when. So now you can see all the all the people who are going to be on site and when. Okay, I think that's it. So, so from here, everything's been scheduled. So if customer's okay with it and you need to, you know, lock it in, you could bulk dispatch these appointments if you want. I've had some customers, you know, instead of uh, creating them all in a scheduled status, you know, you could create them all in a dispatch status if you want, but usually we like to schedule them. And then once we're confirmed, you can change them all to dispatch. Now let's see something actually. I haven't tried this yet. Can I change all of my statuses here? Hold on. Oh, I can't, it doesn't seem to want to do it in bulk. Okay, I wouldn't do it this way because I can't do it in bulk. So the mass edit for status doesn't work there. So what I would do is I would use this dispatch feature for Toronto, and then I would choose the date range. The other thing you can do is you can control select the appointments that you're you want to dispatch and then you can change right click and you can change the status to be dispatched so that's one way of of dispatching just those jobs it's um it depends on your your comfort level on on what you want to uh how you want to manage that piece. The other, it, you might have drip feed on as well, so it'll just automatically dispatch for you. But um, that just depends on the settings that you have. To provide feedback, we would love your feedback, please. Um, there is a link. that's provided to you.
please share your experience. Please share your expected experience. You know, this one is, is required, this one's not. We would love to hear from you. And um, if, we, if we do need more clarification, we will contact you. Uh, if you wanna have an idea of what backlog features have been considered, they're in here in the documentation. So all of the training steps are here. The considerations that I outlined are also here. And then a developer guide is also included. But in terms of uh, feature requests that have been made, we've heard you. Uh, some feedback has been captured. Not everything was able to make it for the MVP. But we have captured some of the items here. And um, you know, if we're if we're starting to see other uh, folks requesting the same thing, we will just add votes to it, if you will. But these are all from uh, either you or from our internal Salesforce team members who uh, had some ideas for us. Uh, but we uh, definitely, definitely want to. Uh, track your feedback and share it with everybody. So we're keeping them all right in this documentation guide. Thank you very much for trying this out. We do hope that it works for you. Um, and then we wish you the best success and have fun with it. Thank you.